Hey everybody, I'm Mama Bird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I put together a collection of some of the best ground beef meals I have ever made. I don't know about you, but sometimes coming up with a new way to use ground beef can be a bit tedious. There always seems to be tacos, spaghetti, and that's it. So I'm gonna go through and show you some of the ways that I have used it. If you're new here, my name's Carolina. I live in Montana. I do a lot of pantry cooking, product reviews, and budget shopping on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I'd love to have you come join my YouTube family. I also have a Facebook group, Mama Bear's Homestead. Please go on and head over there. I'll do a lot of posts or surveys. We do recipe sharing and just an overall great support group and we would love to have you. All right guys, so let's get into the kitchen and the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how I bulk cook ground beef and put it in the freezer. So that way I have it on hand, ready to go when I need a quick meal. So let's get in the kitchen. I'll show you how I cook it and what meals I make from it. The first thing I do is I have my par-cooked bacon bits in there. This is bacon that I have grounded up and then pre-cooked like halfway and then froze. So I'm gonna use that as a filler to stretch it out and then I'm also gonna add some peppers and onions to it as well just to kind of beef up the beef and make it last a little longer. This is what I do. You could also add sausage to this. I think that would be really good, beef and sausage mixed up together. But I happen to have a lot of bacon, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I gotta tell you, it really flavored up that meat. So that was about half a pound of bacon that I did. And now I'm gonna be adding diced peppers and onions to it. It's something that I always add to all my ground beef. I just feel like it adds such a good flavor. It helps get extra veggies in there. It gives it a pop of color. And now I'm gonna season it with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder, just generic seasonings to kind of give it some flavor, but I don't know what I'm gonna be using this for later on, but I want my meat to have a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna add that to it. That's all there is to it. Now let's get to making some meals. All right, first thing we're going to do is press this to saute, and we're just gonna leave it on 30 so it'll just start firing up. And I have a little bit of garlic oil here. This is the oil. Here's the garlic that I cooked in the olive oil here. This is avocado and olive oil. So I cooked this garlic in the oil, strained off the oil, and then have the garlic here. I'm actually gonna break this down into pints and put some in my freezer so it'll last longer. This is what I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna start off with some of the garlic oil in there. A couple of tablespoons. And then I have some pre-cut onion and I cut up one of those bell peppers and I like to have that just in my fridge. And then this recipe calls for raw bacon. I do have some of my cooked peppered bacon that I did last time. And I have this just portioned in a snack bag and in my freezer. So if I need cooked bacon, I can pretty much cook this from frozen. It's ready to go and I don't have to dice and cook it. So this, I noticed with having bacon prepped like this, it makes you use it more. Or having onions and peppers prepped in your fridge ready to go, you're more likely to include those in a recipe because you don't have to take the time to stop and cook them. So I'm gonna do about half this onion, this bell pepper, and then I'm just gonna combine them into one, like that. And then this can go in my fridge and I will use this for another meal. All right, we got some sizzling going. So if you had raw ground beef at your at the time, this would be the opportunity for you to be cooking it here. Just use the saute on your Instant Pot. We're gonna be using venison in this recipe. I'm gonna add a little bit of my garlic, a couple of cloves. Now this garlic is pre-cooked, so it'll just mash up. As soon as it starts heating up, it'll just mash and it'll become like a garlic paste. It's really good. All right, and then we're gonna add in our bacon. I'm just doing about a cup of bacon. This is peppered bacon. I right, know normally you would add chili powder to this. Um, I'm skipping that step though, because my mustard I'm adding is chipotle mustard, so that has a little spice. And the barbecue sauce I'm adding is sweet and zesty, so that has a little spice. But I am gonna add a little smoked paprika at this point. And if you add your spices before you add all your liquids and add them in the oil, it's got to be in an oil. And then it'll help activate the oils in the spice and it'll just increase their flavor so much, guys. It's like a whole different depth of flavor when you toast your spices. All right, so I'm just going to turn this off. All right, so we're going to add two thirds cup of water. 
And then that's gonna help deglaze the bottom if we have any crusty bits. Okay. So I'm gonna add about two pounds of this. This is a little over three pounds cooked, so that'll be my leftover. Okay, I'm gonna add a can of drained rinsed kidney beans. And then let me open up my baked beans. All right, so this is the brown sugar hickory. Now, if you don't have baked beans, you can always use pork and beans as a good one, or just any of like, I don't know, chili beans would probably work for this too. You know, just anytime you see someone else doing a recipe, just take it with a grain of salt and just know that you can adapt it to anything you have in your pantry, in your cupboards. Something that you like, if you don't like red beans, you wanna do black beans, use that. Like it doesn't have to be perfect by recipe, guys. All right, so beans in there, check. Next is half a cup of ketchup. I have some of this that I have. I'm just gonna use all of this up. And since this is a reusable cap, I can wash this and then make my own ketchup and water bath this myself and reuse this jar. All right, half a cup of barbecue sauce. Here's the Dijon mustard, one and a half tablespoons. So I'm just going to use the last of this. I'm in a third of a cup of molasses. Uh-oh. It's sticky shut. Can't get it open. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, oh, where's the husband when you need him? Ooh, I got it. All right, if that ever happens to you guys, I just ran this under some hot water. And that worked great. And I'm going to make sure I clean the sides really good before I close it back up. So I'm going to do a third of a cup of molasses. I'm just going to eyeball it because everything else is sticky. And then I'm going to do a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Liquid smoke, it's just, I don't know, it's just uh, liquid smoke. Like it, it just gives it like a little smoky flavor like it's been on a barbecue or something. So I'm just going to do a teaspoon of that, just a couple sprinkles. That is not necessary. Okay. Mix it up a bit. Okay, and we're just gonna push it down. It actually said don't stir. Whoops. <laughs> so you're not supposed to stir it. Just push everything down. Make it even. Hopefully this won't give us the burn notice. All right, put our lid on her. And this is going to pressure cook for eight minutes. And then after that, we're gonna let it natural release for 15 minutes and then it should be done. Oh, that looks so good. It's just like elevated baked beans with some meat in there. So I'm gonna get a bowl going. And that was one tasty dinner. So let's move on to see what I make next. For this next dinner, I'm going to be making some chili and then I'm going to put some cornbread on top of it. Make sure you don't drop the can in there. I'm gonna be adding some ranch beans, some chili beans, black beans, some cooked hamburger that I made in bulk and I had a bit left over, so I threw that in there, and then some Worcestershire or Who's Your Sister sauce. And we're just gonna mix this all up. I'm going for a chili and I realized that I really didn't have any kind of tomato thing in here, no kind of tomato-based product. So I'm going to be adding in a can of my homemade Rotel, but you could add any kind of diced tomatoes or crushed tomatoes, any kind of tomato sauce or blend that you like, whether you like it chunky or you like it smooth. I like that the Rotel had the peppers and the onions in it, and it has some flavor and seasoning as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there and get that all mixed up. You could also add any additional spices if you would like. And then for the topping, I have just one box of Jiffy corn mix, but I like to make it a little runnier because that to me spreads over easier. And when you bake it, it's not gonna be such a thick topping of cornbread. It's gonna be kind of thinner. And I feel like you get a much better cornbread to chili ratio. I just baked this at 350 for about 30 minutes. You just wanna go until the top is nice and crispy. For this next meal, I'm going to be making a beef and rice on the stovetop. I have some frozen peppers and onions, and then a pound of ground beef, one can of mixed veggies, and then a can of French onion soup. I have some beef stock that I'm going to be using the fat and the juice out of. 
So what I'm going to do is scoop out the fat and kind of use that to cook the peppers and onions. These are from frozen. So once you add those in there, it will do some popping and cackling because of the water that's touching the oil. So be careful of that. But just cook that till it's nice and soft. And then you're going to add your hamburger. I added it straight in there and then I'm just going to be breaking it up with my spatula. Now I have a pack of French onion soup that is going to go in there as well. That's going to help flavor up the ground beef and then it's also going to help thicken it up a little bit, any of that liquid that was in there. And now that it's all cooked, I'm going to add some Who's Your Sister sauce and then I'm going to add the rest of that beef broth and then that can of French onion soup mix and then I'm going to add chicken stock and then I'm going to add three cups of rice and then my mixed veggies so this is a one pot meal you throw it all in there put the lid on it I let it cook for 20 minutes and then let it sit for 10 and then it came out absolutely beautiful I had like a little crunch on the bottom you know how rice can get crunchy on the bottom and it has your veggies your meat and your starch all in one I definitely think this recipe is a keeper. All right, everybody, for dinner tonight, I'm going to be utilizing the Swiss chard we got, the cabbage, and then the carrot chip, and then I have some hamburger that I have frozen in the freezer I'm gonna bring out, and then one of my bags of peppers and onions, and we're going to make some egg roll in a bowl. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get these peppers and onions cooking. I'm going to kind of cut them. Dice them a little more. A little bit of my garlic I cooked in oil, so I'm going to put some of that garlic oil down. Then I wash this Swiss chard really good. I'll take the ends off. And the stems require cooking longer than the leaves. So you're just gonna de-stem it. And then you can also just use your hand and like scrape the stem off as well. Right now I have my heat at about a six. thing about egg roll in a bowl is that you can literally put any kind of veggie in there that you would have any extra of you have in your fridge pretty much as long as you have cabbage you can do it so I'm just gonna slice up this Swiss chard this will cook down a lot like spinach will I want these stems just to cook a little more. Now you could always use celery instead as well. Celery is very common in egg rolls in a bowl. Okay, and while that's cooking, I'm gonna slice up a couple of these carrot chips. Shredded carrot usually works great, but this will work as well. You just slice these up for strips.
All right, I'm gonna put in the Swiss char. We're gonna let this cook for a little bit and then we're going to add our ground beef, which is already cooked, so that's why we're doing this first. We just gotta heat it up. I'm gonna add a little more garlic oil. Some garlic. All right, and for this cabbage, we're going to take off a couple of layers. I did wash this. Go ahead and just throw this garlic on top there. One of you guys just gave me the tip of turning my knife upside down and using that to slide, and it'll help keep your blade from getting dull as quickly. And that was a great idea, so I really appreciate that tip. And I wanted to share that with you guys. So the cabbage, it just has like this hard core in the center. So right there is what you need to remove. All the rest is edible. So I like to just kind of go at it at an angle like that. and get it out of there and then you don't have to use a shredder or anything for this all you do is slice it and it comes out shredded and I'm gonna go for a thin you can also use a bag of coleslaw mix guys if you don't want to shred all this up that would work you could use red cabbage if that's what you have. And I'm going to add this half, or actually this is just a quarter of the cabbage. Next thing I'm going to pour on there is some sesame oil. The sesame oil is really what makes the dish. So try and use it if you can. It's worth having in your pantry, especially if you like a lot of like Asian dishes. Good. I don't think I want to add any more cabbage. If I didn't have that Swiss char, then I would add the other half of that cabbage. But that Swiss char really bumped that up too. But well, we're gonna let this cook for a little bit. Put on it, let that cook for a couple minutes covered, and then I'm going to slice up the rest of my cabbage. All right, at this point, I'm gonna throw my frozen ground beef on there. Been sitting next to it, so it's a little thawed out now. This is why it's nice to have prepped meat either canned up on your shelf or cooked off and frozen in your freezer. That way, if you need to make dinner on the fly, you have saved yourself a lot of trouble by already having your protein cooked and done. And it really doesn't affect the meat that much. I can't really tell a difference between frozen and fresh. We're gonna mix this up, let that beef come to temperature. There we go. Oh, what a mess. I just took the lid off. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. And then I'm gonna turn my heat up to high so I can get this, that soy sauce kind of mixed all in. Get this searing a little bit. Looks good though. This is very low carb by the way. Anybody who's on low carb, 
I'm going to give it a taste. Tastes good. I am going to hit it with some salt, though. I'm just going to let it cook. That's why I put it on high, so it can cook up some of this liquid down here. Give it some, some nice color. I'm also going to add in some of my leek powder. Let's that stir. Okay, so if you move this, you can see that a lot of that liquid is gone. There's just a little bit left. That's what you want. All right, I'm going to turn it off. It's done. There we go. That's what's for dinner. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is the first time I have made this for the kids, so we'll see how they like it. Now on to the next meal. I'm going to be making instant mashed potatoes. These are the baby reds. So I'm just going to do this in the microwave version. I've never done this before. I usually boil the water on the stove, but today I put it in the microwave to till it was nice and hot and I'm pouring it into the potatoes. Oh, I've lost my fork in there, darn it. I'm just going to mix this up till it's nice and combined and then I'm going to put a lid on it and we'll see how it turns out. So to this mixture, I drained it and then I'm going to be adding in half a bag of mixed veggies, just what I have in my freezer to get that out. And then I'm adding water and this mushroom gravy pack. I think that's gonna make a nice gravy for the shepherd's pie. As I was mixing this, I was a little concerned that there might not be enough juice in there. So I was debating about whether needing to add another packet or some more water. But after letting it sit a little while longer, it created a little bit of juice there. So I think that it was going to be okay. And now we're checking our mashed potatoes and they got cooked. They're fluffy, they look good. So I would say that was a win. I'm gonna add some parsley to that just to kind of give it a little bit of color. And then that a little bit of garlic powder because I like garlic flavored mashed potatoes. And that's what's gonna end up going on top of our ground beef mixture. I did also add some salt because the potatoes love salt. So once we get those all mixed up, we got some nice pretty mashed potatoes to go on top. I'm going to put this in an 8x8 pan. It seems like if I do a 9x16, then that would take up all of that mixture, and that's just a lot of leftovers for us. So I'm just going to shoot it down to an 8x8, and we'll see how this goes. This is one of those dishes, though, that the whole family loves. If you have not given Shepherd's Pie a try yet, I wish you would because it is very delicious. And you could really use any kind of mashed potatoes on there, but I feel like it works just great with instant. You want to create a little bit of like peaks and texture to this because those get nice and crispy once they go in the oven. So we're going to bake that at 350 for probably about 30 minutes and then we'll give it a check. It's nice and bubbly, so I'm going to add some cheese to this because everything's better with cheese. Leave it in there for maybe 10 more minutes. And now it is done. That it was definitely enough gravy. You could see it bubbling out of the sides there. So I think I did okay on that gravy. I'm glad I didn't add more. And now that's what the kids are having is some shepherd's pie and some fresh watermelon. For this next meal, I'm going to be using what I have to make some spaghetti. I have some of these small portions that I get from the kids' lunches that are marinara sauce that are kind of messy to eat on the go. So I save them for meals. And then I have this packet. I thought it was marinara sauce, but turns out it's enchilada sauce. And then I'm going to be adding a can of plain tomato sauce. And this is our frozen ground beef mixture. I tried beating it up to break it up and it broke it, but that's what we're gonna be using. A can of mushrooms and this Johnny's garlic bread seasoning is what I'm gonna be putting on some garlic bread. So I'm gonna start just by making sure you scrape out all those containers. This is just marinara sauce that they can up. And then I thought this was marinara, but pretty much as soon as it hit the skillet, I could smell it and it was a little bit of a spicy enchilada sauce. But honestly, guys, that added a nice flavor to this spaghetti sauce. I would suggest doing that from now on. Gotta love those mistakes and give your spaghetti sauce a little flair. And then I added a plain can of tomato sauce because that wasn't quite enough and I want to cook a full pound of spaghetti. So if you don't have the little marinara sauces, then you can just add spaghetti sauce and then season it up as you would like. And then to this sauce, while it's still heating up, I'm going to add the frozen ground beef. You can like microwave this to heat it up and stuff, but I find that cooking it from frozen works just fine. All you got to do is put a lid on it and let it steam a little bit in that sauce and then it'll break up. That's it. Break it up. And now I have these everything but the bagel seasoned loaves and I'm going to make some garlic butter with this garlic seasoning I got and put it on top. Oh my gosh, guys, this was so good. It was definitely like store-bought, but not as 
I don't know, crunchy. And I got to, it, this, it, the garlic bread was delicious. Husband ended up having mine, <laughs> a leftover one. So I'm going to add the mushrooms to it. And then I'm just going to try and break up that meat as it's cooking. It'll slowly break up. It's no big deal. Just mix it around. I'm going to give it a taste. It, it does need a little bit of seasoning in there. So I'm going to add that garlic spread seasoning to it. Why not? You don't just have to use that for garlic bread. Use it for any kind of pasta marinara dish. So I'm going to let that cook a little more. Then I'm just going to add a whole pound of spaghetti. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to mix it all together and serve it versus putting just noodles and then putting the sauce on top. I like it mixed up. I find it a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and dish that up. And this is our finished dinner with that toasted garlic bread. Oh, it was so yummy. Nothing like classic spaghetti in under 15 minutes as well. For this next dish, it's another take on spaghetti, but this is actually called taco spaghetti, and it's not quite as saucy as regular spaghetti, and I really like the flavor. This is a kid favorite, so if you got kiddos, I highly suggest you give this one a try. I'm just going to put the meat straight in there and try and break it up a bit, just kind of move it around. If you have trouble breaking it up, then you can just put a lid on it and steam it for a little bit. That's what I do a lot too, and then I'll flip it over, try to break up the other side. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add my taco seasoning to this as well as my can of diced tomatoes. Those tomatoes have Italian seasoning and basil in there, so I think it'll go really well in here. And then adding that tomatoes helped create something to steam it and break up the meat a little bit. So we're just going to keep breaking that up until it's all cooked together. The tomatoes will cook down and then that meat will kind of break up a bit. So that's the texture we're looking for. Now that's all we have to add to it. It's super simple. If you didn't have your cooked ground beef, then you would cook ground beef and then add the tomatoes and everything to it. So I'm going to mix it, the spaghetti in there. And I was like, man, this does look kind of dry, like it needs some sauce or anything. But I just left it as is. The tomatoes ended up creating a nice juice. The kids really enjoyed this too. They ate quite a bit of it, came back for seconds. So they also did not mind that it wasn't as saucy as regular spaghetti. I think that's kind of the point is that it's a little different. So I have some freeze-dried cilantro here. Fresh cilantro obviously is the way to go. If you don't like cilantro, then you can skip this or maybe put like some Italian seasoning. I think that would go good with here as well. So I'm putting cilantro on there and then I'm gonna put some Colby Jack cheese. That kind of helps make a nice top for it. It makes it gooey. Like if you were to put Parmesan cheese on regular spaghetti and then it just gets melted and it's ready to go. I was got a little impatient as you can see and the cheese didn't melt all the way. But that's okay it melted afterwards with for enough for the second bowl and that's what they had like i said it looks kind of weird because it's not as saucy i'm not really much of a buttered noodled person but this is kind of what it reminded me of but with just a little bit of flavor to it now for this next meal i'm going to make a big batch of meatloaf what i have here are some canned mustard pickles i thought that i would like these because i like pickles and i like mustard but they're a little too vinegary for me so what i have been doing is using my emulsion blender and i've been pureeing them and then mixing them in with meatloaf because i don't know about you guys but i usually mix mustard into my meatloaf so this is a good way to use up this product from 20 of 21 and it still adds great flavor to my meatloaf now that that is all blended i'm going to go ahead and start mixing my meat i pulled out some bacon some ground pepper bacon i need to use up i'm going to add half of this so probably roughly half a pound or so of bacon in there and then this is two pounds of elk and then i'm going to add two pounds of venison which is deer meat and then i'm going to be adding two pounds of ground beef so this is a good mixture of all different types of meat that i have in my freezer that i need to get used up and all of these i enjoy i'm going to add the whole pint of my pureed mustard pickles and then i'm going to add about a cup of salsa this is just from costco and then i'm going to add two boxes of chicken stuffing mix i hear that stuffing's really good in meatloaf and i have a lot of boxes that need to get used up so i'm doing that let's throw in some of this fresh parsley that i have some salt some pepper and of course the who's your sister sauce so this is all that I'm going to be adding. Oh, and two eggs. I have those turkey eggs that I'm trying to use up. So I'm going to add two of them. I do suggest that you scramble the eggs a bit before you add them into the meatloaf. It just helps to make sure that the eggs are fully incorporated and you don't get like lumps of white anywhere. 
Now this is one of those things where you kind of just got to use your hands. So I'm going to get in there with my hands. I did take my rings off for this. And then I just like to kind of grab it and push it down and do like a fold method. So I'm breaking up the pieces of meat as I get in there. You want to make sure everything is equally distributed. So I'm kind of lifting it up, twisting the bowl, pushing it into the center. Lift up the outside, push it in, twist. And you just want to keep doing this until the meat is fully incorporated. I usually like to give it a smell too to kind of just make sure that I smell like it's going to be pretty well seasoned. And then I'm going to be baking this in a 9 by 13. I kind of push it, make sure it's in the shape of a loaf. And then I'm going to bake it this way with some foil on top. And then I will add my topping later on. Now for the remainder of this meatloaf, I'm going to try and vacuum seal it and get it put away for a meal for the freezer. I took the top of the bag and folded it around the outside of it so that way the inside won't be touching it. And then I'm going to compact it as much as I can and try and vacuum seal it. I did, however, notice that with the juice, it did not vacuum seal all the way, which was a bit of a disappointment. But one of you guys told me that if you put stuff in the freezer and then try and vacuum seal it, it works a lot better. So we're going to give that a try. Our meatloaf is out of the oven and it has quite a bit of grease around it. So I'm just going to pour that off into a jar. And then we are going to add our topping. Lots of different choices you can do with the topping. Some people mix brown sugar with ketchup. I'm just going straight for the ketchup. That's how my mom always made it. It's how I grew up with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I did see someone use Dijon mustard and honey before though. What are some of your favorite toppings for meatloaf? I would love to learn some different options and try some new things. So this is what it looks like all put together. I have meatloaf, mashed potatoes, bacon, green beans, and sweet carrots. And that's what's for dinner. Yum. For today's lunch, I'm going to be making this Zetaran's dirty rice. I have some home canned beef here that I'm going to be using. But if you don't have home canned beef, then you can always use ground beef and just cook it up and go from there. Or you could always use sausage, pretty much any kind of meat you want. On my home canned beef, I like to add peppers and onions to the bottom of it. So that's why you see that in there. I didn't bother draining any of the juices. I figured I'm just going to let this thicken up and that'll add more flavor to the dish because I'm going to be needing to add water anyway. So might as well use the juice that comes with the canned meat for more flavor. So you're just going to pour the packet in there. This was a pretty old one that I needed to get used up. So some of the seasoning is very clumpy. So you really want to make sure that you get that broken up because you don't really want to bite into a clump of seasoning. That's no fun. So I just mixed that around until all of that seasoning was absorbed. Then I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth to this. And then you're going to bring it to a boil, bring it back down to a simmer and let this cook for 20 minutes is what the box said. And you don't want to remove the lid at all. You want to make sure that you keep that closed. And then once it's ready, you open it up and that's it. It looks really great, nice and fluffy. You can, like I said, use any kind of meat with this and add some sour cream on top of it to the way that I had it. And that's what's for dinner today. For this next lunch, I'm going to be making some ravioli. I have this mushroom truffle ravioli, some frozen ground beef that I just keep in the freezer already pre-cooked. This was used by 2020, so this definitely needs to get used up. It has a little bit of frostbite to it, but I was like, you know what, we're going to get this used up and I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I just have a smidgen of marinara sauce or pizza sauce left in this jar, so I'm going to use that. And then I have some garlic herb parmesan. And that's the only ingredients that I'm going to be adding to this. I did salt my pasta water to make sure that it can get some extra flavor in there. And then I'm going to add my hamburger in with the ravioli at this point so that way it can get cooked because I'm just going to be adding sauce to this and it won't really have a chance to heat up. Now I'm just going to boil this for a couple of minutes, like five minutes until the ravioli start floating in the water. Get that drained off and then just use whatever sauce you have to flavor this. It's really any kind of sauce. Alfredo would be good, marinara. So I'm just throwing that in there and then adding the garlic Parmesan cheese. We're going to get that mixed up. That's the only cheese I'm going to put in here. Don't mind my cameraman there. He's in training. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of mm. olive oil just to add a little bit to keep it from sticking. And that's all she wrote. So that's what we're having for lunch today. And now you've seen some of the best ground beef meals that I have made. What are some of the best recipes you have for ground beef? I would love to hear more from you guys. Let me know in the comments below. We're always needing to learn more from each other. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Boots.